should ever tell me. I think it much unkindly that thou, Iago, who hast had my purse as if the strings were thine, should know of this. Thou would not hear me. If ever I did dream of such a matter, abhor me. Thou toldst me, thou heldst him in thy hate. Oh, despise me if I do not. Three great ones of the city, in personal suit to make me his lieutenant, oft after him. And by the fate of man, I know my price. I'm worth no worse a place. But he is loving his own pride and purposes evades them. And in conclusion, none suits my mediators. For certes, says he, I have already chose my officer. And what was he? Forsooth, a great arithmetician, one Michael Cassio, a Florentine that never set a squadron in the field, nor the division of a battle knows more than a spinster. But he, sir, had the election, and I, of whom his eyes had seen the proof, at Rhodes, at Cyprus, and on other grounds, Christian and heathen, must be bellied and canned. He, in good time, must his lieutenant be. And I, God bless the mark, his moorship's ancient. By heaven, I rather would have been his hangman. Oh, I sell there's no remedy to the curse of service. Preferment goes by letter and affection, and not by old gradation, where each second stood heir to the first. Now, sir, be judge yourself whether I, in any just term, am a fine to love the more. I would not follow him, then. No, oh, sir, don't tempt you. I follow him to serve my turn upon him. We cannot all be masters, nor all masters cannot be truly followed. For, sir, it is as sure as you are Roderigo, were I the Moor, I would not be Iago. I follow him to serve my turn upon him. For, sir, do plague him, plague him with flies. Though that his joy be joys, yet throw such chances of vexation on it as it may lose some colour. Where is the father's house? Here it is, I'll call it out. Do, with like timorous accents and dire yell as when by night and negligence the fire is spied in populous cities. What ho, Brabantio! Signor Brabantio, ha! What ho, Brabantio! Awake, thieves, thieves! Look to your house, your daughter, and your bags! Thieves, thieves! Where's the reason of this terrible summons? What is the matter there? Signor, are all your family within? Are your doors locked? Why? Wherefore ask you this? Soon, sir, you're robbed. For shame, put on your gown. You've lost half your soul. Your heart is burst. Even now, now, very now, an old black ram is topping your white you. What? Have you lost your wits? Most reverend, Signor, do you know my voice? Not I. What are you? My name is Roderigo. The worse of welcome. I have charged thee not to hold about my door. In honest plainness, thou hast heard me say my daughter is not for thee. Sir, sir, sir. But thou must need be sure. My spirit and my face have in them the power to make this bitter to thee. Patience, good sir. What tellest thou me of robbing? This is Venice. My house is not a grave. Most grave, Brabantio. In simple and pure soul I come to thee. Sir, we come to do you service, and you think we are ruffians. You'll have your daughter covered with a Barbary horse. You'll have your nephews made to you. You'll have courses for cousins and genets for Germans. What more fame will shut up? I am one, sir, that comes to tell you your daughter and the moor are now making the beast with two bats. Thou art a villain. You are a senator. This thou shalt answer. I know thee, Rodrigo. <sighs> sir, I will answer anything. But I beseech thee, if it be your pleasure and most wise consent, as partly I find it is, that your fair daughter at this odd even and dull hour of the night transported herself with no worse nor better guard than a knave of common hire, a gondolier to the gross clasps of a lascivious moor. If this be known to you and your allowance, we then have done you bold and saucy wrongs. But if you know not this, my manners tell me we have your wrong rebuke. Do not believe that from the sense of all civility I thus would play and trifle with your reverence. Your daughter, if you have not given her leave, I say again, hath made a gross revolt, tying her duty, beauty, wit, and fortunes to an extravagant and wheeling stranger of here and everywhere. Straight satisfy yourself. If she be not in her chamber of your house, let loose on me the justice of the state for thus deluding you. Strike on the your hall. Light, I say. Light. Farewell, for I must leave you. It seems not meet nor wholesome to my place to be produced, as if I stay, I shall, against the moor. Though I do hate him as I do hell pains, yet for necessity of present life I must show out a flag and sign of love, which is indeed but sign, that you shall surely find him, leap to the Sagittary, the rays at search, and there will I be with him. So farewell. It is too cruel and evil. Gone she is. And what's to become of my despised time now is, is naught but bitterness. Now, Rodrigo, where didst thou see her? Uh, with the moor, sayest thou? How didst thou know to she? What said she to you? Are they married, think you? Truly, sir, I think they are. Oh, heavens, how got she out? Oh, treason of the blood. 
fathers from hence, trust not your daughters' minds by what you see them at. Are there not charms by which the property of youth and maidenhood may be abused? <coughs> have you not read what read about some such things? Yes, sir, I have indeed. <sighs> Call up on my brother! Oh, would you had had her? Some one way, and some another. Do you know where we may apprehend her on the moon? I think I can discover them, if you please, to get good guard and come along with it. I pray you, lead on. Get some weapons home! On, good Rodrigo. I deserve your pains. <laughs> 